Hi, this is Pat with Pat's Two Cents. I had a dream, y'all, and um, I want to share this as a form of warning. Satan knows exactly what your taste is, and he knows exactly what package to deliver your taste in. Now, I want to say this in a way where you get exactly where I'm coming from, but this is a warning. And I believe the Lord gave me this warning because sometimes when you are focused, you're aiming at a certain direction and you plan to serve God with all your might and live holy for God with all your might and the strength that God gives. Listen to this. Be very careful about who you allow in your inner sanctum. Now I say that in a comical way. Uh, because even though I'm silly and I have a great sense of humor and I love laughing at life, laughing at myself and all that, some things are not really a laughing matter. And one of those things is who you allow around you. You may have to cover yourself with a lot of people and not allow yourself to be left alone with just anyone. All right, now in this dream, I was right in the middle of comforting a young lady who wanted to be a part of my congregation. And while she was there talking about struggles she was dealing with, a man presents himself, letting me know that the team that was trying to work on the lock of the door hadn't found the exact lock yet, but that they were still working on it. And while he was telling me this, he was also very, very affectionate. And I felt my temperature rising. Now, in this dream, the man is very attractive to me. I ain't dead, I'm just old. The man's very attractive to me. And I'm realizing that I'm recognizing what I'm seeing going down. And there is a, a little discussion going on. It's like two conversations going on at one time. You got the spiritual one where the, the young lady is talking about how she wants to serve God and use her gifts for the Holy Spirit and all of that. And then you have this man on the other side who is appealing to the flesh. You get me? So I see this going on simultaneously. And I realize that in the dream, the conversation with the lady, she kind of fades out stage right. And this man is still lingering around because what I wanted to talk to her about was let's go down the list of the, of the gifts the Lord has given you. And let's see what needs we have in the congregation and what things we could do to help activate and stir up those gifts where you can explore the different ways you can serve God, both within the walls of the church and without outreach ministry. In the meantime, now I don't know where she went in this dream. But this man is sitting here and he is hot and he looks good. He smells good. He's a good presentation and all the right packaging. And I know what's happening. I, I didn't just fall off the turnip truck. I've been out there in the streets. I know what's happening. I recognize the devil's trap when I see it. And now he's hinting around about me fixing him a meal. And I let him know straight out, baby, I've been taking care of a man for years. And I'm not looking for somebody to take care of right now. I'm looking to serve God. And I'm looking to keep everything on the up and up, not on the down low. So in my mind, I'm thinking, brother, you need to go to a nightclub if you're looking for pe for pickup action.
because it's not happening here. Like I said, I may be old, but I'm not dead. So I knew what was going on. I could see where his eyes were going. And I'm thinking, I'm an old woman. I don't need this kind of nonsense in my life. Let me walk this brother to the door and get him on the road. Then I woke up. Ladies and even, even a lot of you men who are in ministry, you have to be very careful. God has an anointing on your life. God is using you. You're right in the middle of reaching your goals in ministry, in the kingdom of God. You have got to be careful not to yoke yourself up with people who could care less about the kingdom and then more about mischief. You may have to open your mouth wide and say, baby, you need to hit out and hit some nightclubs and leave the church alone because you're not in this for the reasons we are. You're in here trying to find yourself some action. And these people in this circle are not looking for the action you're looking for. And I'm not going to stand here and let you slither your way in and stray people out of what they're doing for the Lord because you're hot and bothered. As the song goes, hit the road, Jack, and don't you come back no more, no more, no more, no more. We do not need you here. I rebuke you. I rebuke that spirit in the name of Jesus. And you can go right along with your little spirit and find a nightclub, sweet pea. Okay? Because just because I'm not dead does not mean I'm going to give myself a license to play tiddlywinks knowing it's out of the will of God, knowing what the word says about not making provisions to fulfill the lusts of the flesh. The flesh can go in a coma for all I care. I don't have time for that. And guess what, you guys? Neither do you. You do not have time to let Satan utilize your time and waste your body on nonsense because that is his way of getting you off, off point. That is his way of getting you out of your lane, getting you to step out of bounds and lose your footing, lose your bearings as far as how God wants to use you. You got to be very careful with that. Satan can use all kinds of things. He'll bring you the very things you need. He'll package it so nicely. <laughs> The packaging, the looks, the dimensions, let's put it like that. Yeah, the dimensions, everything will be just right. Even the personality. But baby, ain't no, I got to say it streetwise, ain't no God anywhere in that mess. And you know it. You know it. Satan knows just when to bring it too. So you have to be very careful. You have to guard your mind. Guard your heart, guard your body. You have to guard it, baby, with all your life and with all the might God gives you. Get yourself around God's people and keep that crap as far away from you as the East is from the West. Because even though it may satisfy for a hot second, you're going to hate the fact that you gave in. You're going to hate it. You're going to lose so much ground giving in to nonsense. Don't waste your time. Please don't do that. Don't do that to yourself. Don't do that to the Lord. Don't crucify him afresh by satisfying your flesh. Please don't do that. It's not worth it. It's, it's just not. If you got to do without for the rest of your life, baby, it's not a big loss. Trust me on that. It's not a big loss. Half the time when you give in, it ain't even going to be worth it anyway. When you think about it, look back a few years and think about how many disappointments you yielded yourself to. 
Mm -mm. Very few out there that will hit your buttons the right way in the first place. So why waste your time? Hmm? Think about that. Why waste your time? Stay in the loop with the Lord. Stay in the word. Keep yourself surrounded with godly people and listen to godly counsel. There are too many traps out there, too many demons. They, they're familiar spirits and they know exactly what your body is hankering for. You need to mortify the deeds of the flesh. You need to shut yourself down, baby, and stay focused on the things of God because you will find yourself chasing your proverbial tail, baby, and everybody else will be chasing it too. And you will be getting nowhere fast wondering what happened to your relationship with the Lord. He's at a far distance. You can't see him. You can't hear him. You can't even feel him. And you're wondering, well, what happened? Because you gave your flesh too much attention. That's what happened. You got to be careful. You can't give yourself that kind of a license. It doesn't take but a split second for you to drift out in sea. And you can't find a saint, you can't find a friend, you can't hear the Lord's voice, you've lost all interest in the things of God, it doesn't take but a minute. And the one that got you out there, they're in the wind. You can't even find them anywhere. Why? Because they have completed their assignment for the devil. And they've got you so far off course, that you're too ashamed to find your way back in. Don't let the devil do that to you. You hear me? God bless you. God keep you. God cause his face to shine upon you and give you peace. And while he's doing that, you keep yourself in the ways of God. You stick with Romans chapter 12, Verse 1 and 2, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. That's the least you can do. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. How do you renew your mind, you ask? By reading that word, talking to God, staying with God's people, filling your spirit with the word, being around the praises and worshiping of God, not sitting up there listening to some slimy, you know, you know what, uh, whispering compliments into your ear, praising you so they can get up in your business. You hear me? All right. I don't know how many ways to say it without being crass and, and, and tacky. You get what I'm talking about. All right. God bless you. <laughs>